Hey heroes, you know, I want to talk very briefly about some very practical ways of beginning to experience the Lord. You know, things that I use in my quiet time to become more aware of His indwelling presence. You know, if you're like I was, I believe that God's presence in a moment in time was dictated by whether there was anointed worship music playing or a worship team on stage. You know, I thought that I could only experience His presence in a powerful way corporately, you know, with a bunch of other people at a conference or a Sunday service. You know, I thought there was some mystical equation almost whereby God either showed up or did not show up. And I thought that most of that equation was actually did not rest on me, but somehow on others or just on Him and whether He wanted to manifest His reality. You know, but then I discovered the simple equation which was wrapped up in all those corporate settings and which was available at all moments of the day, even with me on an individual basis, in my car or wherever. And that is this, that each time I sincerely stop to adore Jesus, each time I choose to center my thought life on Him, stopping and resting and simply worshiping Him, each time I do that, I come into a deeper awareness of His indwelling presence and the reality that He has never left me. You know, coming into that reality that His Spirit is in me, is, it's almost like a mathematical equation and it's based on many verses, but two really come to mind. And these are promises of the Lord. A promise of God is this, is that if you do this thing, then I will do this thing. You know, there are promises, they're guaranteed, they're open checks, take them to the bank. You empower the promise simply by having very basic faith. So the two verses that I stand on are this, is Jeremiah 29, 13. You will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. So I feel like God is saying this, is that when you seek me with the deepest fiber of your being, when you, when you incline your heart to me, you will find me. You will, you will come into a place of knowing at the deepest level, level of your heart that I am with you. Isaiah 26, 3 says, He will keep those in perfect peace whose heart is stayed on you. So as we behold the one who is peace, we take on his peace. We come into his peace as we just behold him in adoration. So each time we take the gaze of our thought life from giving a place of influence to the cares and worries around us, and each time we center our thought life on the person of Jesus to simply adore Him, we come into awareness of His indwelling presence. It's guaranteed. You know, His Holy Spirit is always in us. We are not waiting on Him to come down from heaven, but, but really we are waiting for Him to come out. In the Old Covenant, the Holy Spirit would rest on people, it would descend on meetings, it would descend on times, but in the New Covenant, His Holy Spirit rests in us. You know, Jesus said, out of you will flow rivers of living water. Behold, the kingdom of heaven is within you. So the goal is for us to begin to grow in an awareness that we can host this presence, we can become most aware of this presence, and walk in that reality, not just on Sunday, not just at conferences, but all the time. Okay, so you're saying, Matt, this sounds great, you know, but how do I begin to really actually experience God? So let's get really practical. So I would say this, there are three main ways that I use throughout the day to still myself before the Lord, to actively position my heart and my thought life to just gaze on Him. So again, the equation is this, if I come to adore Him sincerely, I will experience the reality of His indwelling presence. So I do one of these three things when I start off my quiet time with the Lord, but also throughout the rhythms of my day. You know, I love to do it when I turn off my car and before I go in somewhere, I rest for around 30 seconds and I do one of these things. The first is simply this, I rest and I close my eyes and I actively bring up to my thought life, Jesus. So sometimes I'll picture him, you know, on the Mount of Beatitudes above Galilee talking to the crowd. Sometimes I'll picture him uh, sitting right next to me in my car or, or on the bench where I'm having my, my quiet time. And all I'm doing is bringing up, I'm meditating on the verse that he has never left me. He has never forsaken me. And so he's right there with me now. And somehow when I actively bring that to my remembrance, uh, I'm able to better to, to be in the moment with him. And the first thing I do, the first method is I simply declare my love for him. Declare my love. I just say, I love you. I love you. I adore you. I give you all my attention and I worship you. I don't want to release a word with my mouth that's not paired up with something from my heart. So I speak to him very slowly. I rest with him and I speak from my heart simple words of, of love, simple words of adoration. The second thing that I love to do is to simply thank him for what he has done that week. You know, even attacks of the enemy I turn into thanksgiving. Lord, I thank you. Uh, that when that thing happened, that you were with me. I thank him for even his, his, his patience with me during moments of compromise. 
You know, Lord, I thank you that in your infinite wisdom, you know the difference between open rebellion and immature follow through. God, I thank you that you're with me, that you're the most, that you're the most patient, patient thing in the universe and that your Holy Spirit is with me. And then the third method that I use is I simply begin to sing out from my heart a worship song. I have a friend, Gary Damien, who's a wedding singer as well as a worship leader. And he said, Matt, when I'm at a wedding and I come into the hall and I'm singing a song, he said, I can sing to the crowd, but he said, I allow the affections of my heart to be focused upon the bride and groom alone. And so when I sing those worship songs, I'm not concentrated on anything else around me. My car, which I'm in, seems very far away. My eyes are closed and I'm singing straight to Jesus. And I find this, that I begin to sing out a worship song that I know, but it very quickly gets itself over to other words where maybe it's the same melody, but there are different words coming out of my heart for thankfulness or adoration of Him. Sometimes I'll begin to sing in the Spirit. I find that as I use one of these methods, either adoration, thanksgiving, and worship, it's almost as if, the, if there was a force of my thinking, all the problems, all the weights, the self-consciousness, the self-centered thinking, if that was like a forest, that these three pathways begin to beat away through the forest so that I can become aware of the indwelling presence of God. And just like if you were going in a real forest, the first time you did it, you would take a machete and you would cut, and it may take you 40 minutes to begin to touch the Lord through Thanksgiving. But the second time you traverse that path, it will be a little faster. And eventually it can become a super highway when you can just close your eyes and say, Jesus, I love you. And you become aware in that moment again of his indwelling presence. There are way too many people who are satisfied with having a narrative of their lives that they're just hanging on. When the narrative that is available is that we are his beloved one who daily interact with that reality, who daily adore him and in that place are, are hugged again by his indwelling presence. We have to come to him not for the experience of him, not to complete our prayer list, not to get clarity on one thing or this thing, not to hear the voice of the Lord. We come to Him to adore Him alone because He's worthy of it. We should have hearts that say, Lord, even if I'm the only one adoring You right now on all the earth, I want my love to be enough. But what you'll find is this, is that as you adore Him, you come into the awareness of Him, the reality of Him, and in that place you do begin to experience Him. You do begin to gain His wisdom. You do begin to gain His understanding on situations that are around you. In closing, I want to encourage you to begin to bring these three methods, adoration, worship, and thanksgiving into your secret place, but also into the rhythms of your day. The reality of His indwelling presence is always available. It's activated simply by whether you want to gaze on Him or not. And so right now, adore Him. Simply, softly, I love you, I worship you, I give you all my affection, I give you all my attention, Jesus, I love you.